There was a kind of a dichotomy in the ancient Hawaiian universe between the realm of people and the realm of the gods. The Wau Kanaka was the realm of people. Kanaka is a person in Hawaiian. And that was in the lowlands, next to the sea, next to your agricultural fields and your house. Um, and the Wawakua, the realm of the gods, was in the uplands, where that which grew was not as a result of human effort. I mean, it was a result of a higher power. <laughs> In ancient Hawaii, um, the protocols for entering native forests were pretty rigorous. You never went there, really, unless you had a really good reason to, to go there. Uh, one would leave the comfortable realm of people behind, enter into the realm of the gods, essentially, um, and ask permission to enter. Uh, this would be accompanied by chant. So here we are up in the Ko'olawa Mountains, which is the backdrop over Honolulu. And today we're going to be talking about Hawaiians and the natural world and the way that the natural world interweaves so tightly in Hawaiian culture. This is a koa tree. Koa is dominant, especially in the lowland mesic forest. Mesic is one of those words that means not too wet and not too dry. Koa loves those middle conditions. And uh, this one's a fairly hefty one for the island of Oahu. It's those massive koa trees that form the hulls of the voyaging canoes. Koa is also the Hawaiian word for warrior. The fierceness and the steadfastness of a warrior is embodied in this tree. Just about every single native plant in the Hawaiian forest has a story about its use and its significance in Hawaiian culture. This is pukiave and it's a native shrub. It's a heather. And it grows anywhere from low elevations like this all the way up to tree line at nearly 10,000 feet on the island of Hawaii. So it's a very versatile and hardy shrub. The wood of the pukiave is very flammable. In ancient times, and even to today, the ashes and the smoke of the pukiave are used to uh, temporarily lower the status of high-ranking people. In ancient times, the Hawaiian uh, chiefs would have what is called mana, it's called spiritual presence or power. And the pukiave was used to temporarily lower the mana of high chiefs in order for them to be able to interact with folks of different levels of, of spiritual power. We've run across one of the most famous trees in the Hawaiian flora. Um, this is sandalwood. It was one of the first economic crops in, in Hawaii. One of the interesting things about Hawaiian plants is that they're usually full of pigments. This one might be, might yield a really nice orange brown or yellowish brown dye. So I'm going to take some of these, um, some of these cuttings and see what I can make of it a little bit later. This plant is called Naupaka Kuahivi. Down at the shore, um, there's an ocean shrub with much larger, shiny leaves. Um, that's called Naupaka Kahakai. Kahakai means at the ocean side. So, the Naupaka Kahakai is the ocean equivalent, and Naupaka Kuahivi is its counterpart here, way up in the uplands. In Hawaiian thought, the uplands are considered masculine, and the ocean side is considered feminine. And so if you were going to ascribe a gender to this plant, um, Hawaiian tradition would say that this is the man and the woman would be the naupaka kahakai down at the ocean. You can pick one of these flowers, rush down to the seaside, pick another flower from the ocean naupaka, put them together and they'd be made whole again. Ah, here we have pala'a. Um, it's one of the favorites for lei making. Um, for all its delicate features, if you pick the pala'a, it will maintain this fresh green look for days um, if you treat it right. The ohi'alehua, which is the name of this tree, um, is named for its flower, the lehua. The lehua is the intensely red blossom of the ohi'alehua tree. 
Ohi'alehua is the dominant tree in Hawaiian wet forests. The blossoms are beautiful to look at, quite delicate though. This is the symbol of the volcano goddess Pele. Um, and so if you're hiking in the forest, uh, picking a lehua is actually a fairly dangerous thing to do. The ohia lehua is the main tree in Hawaiian wet forests, and so it's essential in our watersheds. Um, our watershed forests are why we have such high quality water in Hawaii. To either side of this trail are thick mats of uluhe fern. This is one of the most prolific kinds of native ferns that you'll find in Hawaii. It can form you know, a dense mat, a meter or even more in height. In Hawaiian thought, uh, all of the plants and animals um, are the physical manifestations of, of thousands of gods and goddesses. There is a goddess Hina. Hina is the wife of Ku, god of war and governance. If you enter the forest with ill intent or with improper protocol, it's said to come and grow and surround you and you never leave the forest. Over here, we're literally just a few meters away from what was extremely rich and beautiful native forest. And we see the dark side of Hawaiian forest now. In an environment as benign as Hawaii, whenever you bring in a new species and it finds a niche that it likes, without its natural enemies in place, it can proliferate without control. It's a very sad thing and it's one of the major threats to our native Hawaiian forest. I find myself, whenever I'm working in a remote area doing conservation biology, surrounded by the native plants and animals that I know had cultural uses by ancient Hawaiians and that still, that still have powerful significance to me personally today. We're talking about an island system that had millions of years to evolve before the first people got here, the ancestors of Hawaiians. It stands on its own as a biological gem on the globe. 